Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be talking with this individual, but let me tell you who I'm not talking to. I'm not talking to Keenan Thompson. I am not talking to Louis Armstrong, and I'm sure not talking to the daddy from <laughs> Family Matters. Uh, uh, I, I, I am so thrilled to be talking with one of the most brilliant comedians working today, Roy Wood Jr. Roy, thank you so much for taking the time from your from your day to chat with me. That is a hell of a callback to the correspondence <laughs> dinner. That's a deep cut right there. <laughs> Absolutely. So one of the great things is, is that not only do we have the opportunity of chatting today, I will get to see you live in person in a few weeks because you have not one but two nights at the Meridian uh, Meridian Theater here in Ottawa with uh, the Just for Laughs uh, tour. So I'm very excited yes. about that. We'll get into that in, in, in a moment. So I have to start off with what what inspired you to become a comedian? Because I know that you've been doing this for some time now. You know, I'd say the inspiration was just the desire to share thoughts and jokes with strangers. It's I've always enjoyed making people laugh. And then, like, I can take you all the way back to elementary school and middle school and cracking jokes at the lunch table. And I was a bench warmer in high school when I played baseball. So, you know, humor is how... I dealt with that and became a bit of a, that's where I started getting the first laughs, like from strangers, like you're heckling the opposing team. And then lo and behold, you look up and you see the umpire chuckling and you go, oh yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. So I don't know. It's just something I've always gravitated towards. And then I just lucked up and figured out a way to get paid to do it for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Now, listen, I'm not in your world, but as somebody who who, who pays a lot of attention to it, to me, I would think two of the best, uh, the best jobs, best gigs you can get as a comedian is either hosting the Oscars or hosting the White House Press Correspondents Dinner. I know they're they're vastly apart, but still extremely important and extremely uh, big, big opportunities. You had the opportunity of uh, of, of of hosting the, uh, the 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 Press Correspondents Dinner earlier earlier this year and absolutely killed it. I was incredibly impressed. I'm Thank a you. nerd, yeah, absolutely. I'm a nerd, so I've gone back and I've watched different videos and I've watched them all and 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 I've seen like some ones that that worked and some ones that didn't. Uh, especially now in, in in 2023, with things being uh, being very tense at times, we'll say from a political landscape. One of the things that I loved is the fact that nobody was spared. It wasn't a matter of picking on one side more than the other. Like there was there was nobody in your wake that was uh, that would be spared. And I want to know. I want to take you. I want to take you back to that night because I thought it was such an important uh, part of your career. And and for some people, the first time they actually had a chance to 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 to, to get to know you. Um, so take me back to that night and tell me what that experience was like for you uh it's nerve-wracking but it's exciting it's 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 comedy without a safety net you mm -hmm. know it is hey let me put you on stage in front of the literally the most powerful person of the most powerful nation and half the room is always going to hate the joke at no point will you do a joke that everyone will love and also, you can only do jokes about stuff that happened this week. <laughs> you know, in the last two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. So the reservoir from which you can even fish for topics is shallow. And it still has to be timely. And news is constantly evolving. So... You know, it, it, it the, the answer is yes, and then you just you you shake in your boots for the next two three months as you start trying to figure it out, and you know you you start looking at the bigger the bigger thing is all right. Well, what do I want to say? Yeah, I can crack some jokes, but hmm. Do I, and I sat with my writers, and I was like, well, do I want to talk about making a point? Well, what point do I want to make? You know what? Journalists are broke. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the job of journalism. It, like it also it's one of the few jobs where no one goes on strike. I've never heard of a reporter strike. It's <laughs> true. Like, they really are selfless. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was kind of the idea was just figuring out what are the couple of jokes that I want to make that would make a lot of sense on the day, but could still be relevant, hopefully 
when someone watches this a year from now or two years from now, still be entertained by it. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I thought you did uh, did uh, a remarkable job, and just the level of confidence that you had commanding such such a such a room too. Again, that's something that uh, that you should be very very proud of. Um, I know a lot will be made about your time with uh, at, at that event, but even out, uh, outside of that, um, being a fan, I know that your stand up is also completely on point and one of the things that i really appreciate about your comedy is just so incredibly observational like great like great comedians are so it seems to me that since 9 11 anytime you go to a sporting event there's the moment that we stop and we we, we take a moment and we recognize a, a certain uh, member of the military but it was you that actually said hey how can we never give that person the mic and i thought that was great <laughs> as well right because this is it's 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 true it's kind of like they come on for their moment and then they're and then they're gone but again i think this is just some of the wonderful witticisms and observations that you'll be bringing to the to the to the theater in ottawa once uh when when, when <laughs> you, you know like i want to talk it, it, let me let me make this perfectly clear as well to canadians you know this is a comedy show and i'm not here to bring a bunch of american problems and put them at your feet okay <laughs> the leader the leader of your country just got divorced you all should be scared this is not <laughs> this, this this is a crisis like you you can't you can't have a leader of a powerful nation going through a breakup. I, I don't know if you ever seen a man during a breakup, but he's, we're not well. We, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't need Trudeau making powerful, important decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all got to get this man a girlfriend. There needs to be a special election. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians should be having a special election right now to get Trudeau laid. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's why. He, maybe that's why they broke up. Maybe he did get laid. Yeah, I don't know. But but you know, God bless that woman. Yeah, they can, she. You know, how fed up you have to be with a man to just leave <laughs> a leader. Yeah, like this isn't. This doesn't happen often. Yeah. And elsewhere, Milani. Hillary like, stayed. I was going to say, and, and elsewhere, Milani is looking at that, saying, "Wait, I can do that." <laughs> so, so I'm just saying. That's funny. Yeah. Um, so I guess that answers my next question in terms of what can the wonderful people of of Ottawa expect from from the show? And to your point, I mean, one of the things is yeah. that I don't expect it to be, you know, I'm the the the, the correspondent there, and it was amazing. But I also know, as as I mentioned before, your stand ups on point. So do you kind of come in and do some? some Ottawa observations and sprinkle that into your, to your show. How does yeah, that of course. I, I'm taking some time over the next couple of weeks. I've already started the process of just watching Canadian national news a okay. little bit more okay. just to get a rhythm of what's happening in the country, what people care about in the country. And as you get into market to market, I try to read local newspapers and, and that's just a general protocol of mine for any city that I'm traveling into. I try to read, at least one or two newspapers the week before. Mm -hmm. So it gives me kind of some thoughts about what will be happening. So, you know, once we get about a week out from Ottawa, then I'll start jumping into some of the local, and it can be something as big as, oh, the, the big issue. It could be, let's say, relief efforts for the forest fires on a national level, or it could be the CFL playoffs which will be starting mm -hmm. by the time we get to the country. So there's just, there's always going to be something in some regard to explore. And, you know, there's general topics and observations that I think hold true, regardless of where we are around the globe. You know, I hate self-checkout. I assume you all have self-checkout up there. <laughs> we I do. Yeah. I would assume you have technology. So, <laughs> you know, Things like that, you know, I think that type of stuff plays one to one. Uh, I do think that bringing a little bit of a perspective to the American experience, I think, mm -hmm. is part of the reason why I'm on the tour. You know, there's another American comic on the tour with me as well, uh, Joyelle Nicole Johnson. And, you know, she'll be great. But then you have more regulars that play up there like Malik El Asal or Arthur Simeon. And those guys, like, I'll let them handle the Canadian heavy lifting and the relatability of that, you know, I am an outsider, so I'm not going to come into town and pretend. Yes, just the other day, I love jerk Jamaican food. Don't you do? Mmm, yummy. <laughs> like that's how that's how you sound when you're trying to like blend in. So mm -hmm. no, it's 
yeah, it, it's it's all from an outsider's perspective. And the first thing that I've been able to glean from my research is that the leader of your country is alone. Like I, you, you can't have the leader of a nation on Tinder in between foreign policy meetings. Get Trudeau late. That's that's my platform. <laughs> Oh God. Okay. I don't know how we segue to that. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I want to, I, I want to drift in to rapid fire questions in a moment, but before we do that, um, one of the things I know uh, about you is that charity work and giving back is also very important. I think, again, that's one of the things that makes you like somebody that, 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 that I myself in many others obviously gravitate to, because you're just an over overwhelmingly wonderful person. So I wanted to give you an opportunity just to talk about some of the, the, the charity that you're involved with. That's, that's important to you. I see me incorporated. Uh, it's a charity based down in Birmingham, Alabama. It's like one of the most amazing charities in, in helping minority, helping brown and black people see themselves in the books that they read. And there's studies that show that there's a connection to literacy and crime. And the less you know how to, the lower, the lower the literacy rate, the higher the crime average is um, in a particular area. So, you know, this company is taking on the charge of finding books written by black and brown people for black and brown people so that black and brown people can see themselves in their literature and help dream and dream and think bigger beyond the horizons where they are because it's very easy to be in a in a messed up situation Mm -hmm. and turn around and think that there is nothing for you you know down the road so you know, I, I think that's that's definitely something that that's always been important to me, you know, as well as trying to do what I can to try and keep baseball relevant um, in the inner cities, because, mm-hmm. you know, baseball is slowly becoming a sport of prestige and cost more like golf and tennis and skiing. So, you know, there's an organization development or urban baseball academy, the, the Dubs Academy. They take your money and they put it towards kids being able to travel and play the sport they love year round, which also helps to keep kids out of trouble and keep them off the streets. So, Mm -hmm. you know, those are the things that I try to that I try to care about. You know, I can't change the world, but I feel like if I can change my little corner of it down in Birmingham, then that will help permeate and spread out to people who move to other places. And then they try to change their part of the world. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. So thank you for sharing that. Um, again, I always want to be respectful of, respectful of your time. So I do want to have some fun with you, though. Rapid fire okay. questions. So basically, first thing that comes to your mind, let her rip. There is no judgment in rapid fire. It's all fun. Uh, the first question is always, what is your favorite movie of all time? And if you can't da- narrow it down to one, I'll take a top three. Bad Boys. Okay. Will Smith, Martin Lawrence. Favorite all time. Second is Batman Begins. Oh, Okay. Third is collateral. No, collateral second. Okay. All right. Interesting. Collateral second. Collateral is uh, Jamie Foxx, Tom Cruise. That's a very, like anybody that's scared of stepping into what they can be and what they want to be in life should watch the movie Collateral. Interesting. It's a little dark. It's a dark movie. It is. But, yeah. it really is, but it really is about, hey, man, go out and live your life. Tomorrow isn't promised. Hundred percent, and that's something that I've I, I truly believe in. Interesting. One of your favorite movies, Collateral, directed by the same guy who did my favorite movie, Heat, with Pacino and De Niro. So I just I thought that was an interesting uh, Michael Mann. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, okay, it, it's it's an interesting question, but I need to ask you: Do you have a favorite comedy special? Like, is there a comedy special that you watched or that you love going back to that you absolutely love? Whether it be for an inspirational standpoint, just because you think it's hilarious, or is there a favorite comedy special that you've seen that you absolutely love? Sinbad, Afros and Bell Bottoms is probably as perfect a special as George Carlin, You Are All Diseased, and Chris Rock, Bring the Pain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This, that might transfer into my next question would be, who would be on your Mount Rushmore of, of comedians? Oh, I just named three. Yeah. <laughs> Sinbad, Chris, George... That fourth one is tough, man. It's tough because 
you know, I love Pryor. I really do love Richard Pryor. <sighs> yeah, it's got to be Pryor. Like, okay. I, I, I feel like Whoopi Goldberg gets underestimated because she just, she's like Bo Jackson. She was great for a little while and then just never came back to the sport. Mm-hmm. You know, which is, I feel the same way about Eddie Murphy, where it's like, one of the greatest specials of all time, one of the greatest stand-ups of all time. Yes, but dot, 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 length of career asterisk, right? But that's also because he went on to entertain, like greatest entertainer of all time versus greatest greatest comedian. You know what I mean? Like get the splice and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, give me Carlin. It, it, it's it's tough. There's there's a lot, there's, there's, a, there's a lot more people, but you know, Sinbad, I really think does not get the respect he deserves. And that man put up, immaculate Steph Curry level joke per minute numbers in the 90s. Sinbad is one of the few people to do a live comedy special in prime time on network television with commercial breaks. You have to understand how wild that is Mm -hmm. to give a comedian the keys to an hour of prime time television live and let him do whatever the hell he wants. There ain't a comedian today that a network would trust to behave <laughs> accordingly for an hour. No, fair, oh. fair. Um, have you ever had a situation where you where you made a joke about someone and then you ran into them after? I'm not necessarily saying like a slap incident, but in kind of like a you know a, a situation where you made a joke about somebody and then they kind of you know cornered you about it. Mm-hmm. I prank called a guy from Cleveland once and two years later I performed in Cleveland and he came to the show to to gently remind me that he had not forgotten that I had prank called him. <laughs> okay. So not didn't uh, didn't take the joke well. <laughs> yeah, he, he it was two years later, he was still thinking about it. Like this yeah. dude and came to the show alone. He came to beat my ass. And I feel like somewhere during the show, God talked to this man showed up, bought a ticket, two drink minimum, then waited at the mer- waited patiently in the picture line to tell me, just so you know, if I wanted to touch you, I could touch you. Don't ever wow. forget this moment and never call me again. And walked off. Yeah. <laughs> wow just horrified yeah horrified uh, that just kind of goes to show that there's some yeah. people out there who just need a hug all right um i want to end on this one what would because again very impressed with your career which is still soaring and again thank you so much for the time today what advice would you give to to to, to aspiring comedians uh you know surround yourself with people that are that are driven period Surround yourself with people that want something out of life as much as you do. They don't have to want the same thing as you, but you're going to find in this journey, especially with hanging only with comedians, that a lot of them are just in it because they're escaping something and they're not going to pursue this craft with the tenacity that is really required to do it for 25 years and pay bills. So you need to be careful. You need to tread lightly and take very, very seriously the people that you hang around. Okay, I appreciate that. I I want to. You mentioned the names before. I want to mention them again. Uh, Ma- Malik Alasal, uh, Joel Nicole Johnson, Arthur Simeon will all be joining you, Roy Wood Jr., November seventh and eighth at the Meridian Theater uh, Center Point here in Ottawa. Uh, two nights. I mean, one night would have been great. You're just you're just so generous here as we drift into the holiday season. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. I really appreciate the time today. It's been an absolute honor chatting with you and looking yes, forward sir. to seeing yeah, looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Thank you.